This is the Sabbath School lesson for the fourth quarter, 2020. Lesson 3 for October 10 to 16, ready for teaching on Sabbath, October 17. The Law as Teacher. Wednesday, October 14. The Toils and Struggles of Law Keepers. There are great benefits to following God's law as evidenced in the people whom God prospered. Joshua closely followed God's precepts, and he led the people of Israel well. Time and again, the Lord told Israel that if they obeyed the law, they would prosper. Question. Read 2 Chronicles 31, verses 20 and 21. What were the key reasons in this passage as to why Hezekiah prospered? Second Chronicles 31, beginning at verse 20, Thus Hezekiah did throughout all Judah, and he did what was good, and right, and true, before the Lord his God. And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God, in the law and in the commandment to seek his God, he did it with all his heart. So he prospered. Whatever education venue we are in, we must stress the importance of obedience. Yet our students aren't stupid. They will notice sooner or later the harsh fact that some people are faithful, loving and obedient. And yet what? Disaster strikes them as well. How do we explain this? The fact is we can't. We live in a world of sin, of evil, a world in which the great controversy rages and none of us are immune to it. Question, what do these texts teach us about this difficult situation? Mark 6, 25-27, Job chapter 1 and chapter 2, and 2 Corinthians 11, verses 23-29. to Beginning at Mark 6 and verse 25, Immediately she came in with haste to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry, yet because of the oaths and because of those who sat with him, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded his head to be brought, and he went and beheaded him in prison. Job chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, and one who feared God and shunned evil. And seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also his possessions were seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, five hundred yoke of oxen, five hundred female donkeys, and a very large household, so that this man was the greatest of all the people of the east." And his sons would go and feast in their houses, each on his appointed day, and would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. So it was, when the days of feasting had run their course, that Job would send and sanctify them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did regularly. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for anything? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power, only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. 
And a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were ploughing and the donkeys feeding beside them, when the Sabaeans raided them and took them away. Indeed, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels and took them away, yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they are dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose, tore his robe, and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshipped, and he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. Chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil, and still he holds fast to his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause? So Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin. Yes, all that a man has he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils, from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And he took for himself a potsherd with which to scrape himself while he sat in the midst of the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God and shall we not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Now, when Job's three friends heard of all this adversity that had come upon him, each one came from his own place, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Namathite, for they had made an appointment together to come and mourn with him and to comfort him. And when they raised their eyes from afar and did not recognize him, they lifted their voices and wept. And each one tore his robe and sprinkled dust on his head toward heaven. So they sat down with him on the ground seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his grief was very great. And Second Chronicles chapter 11, beginning at verse 23. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more, in labours more abundant, in stripes more me above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews five times I received forty stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, 
Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily? My deep concern for all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is made to stumble, and I do not burn with indignation? Without question, good and faithful people, law-abiding people, have not always prospered at least as the world understands prosperity, and here too might be a partial answer to this difficult question, a question that, as we seek to teach the importance of the law, is no doubt going to be raised. What exactly do we mean by prosperity? What did the psalmist say in Psalm 84.10? I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. There's no question that, by the world's standard, even those faithful to God and obedient to His law don't always prosper, at least for now. We do our students a disservice to say otherwise. And to finish today, read Hebrews 11, verses 13 to 16. How do these verses help us understand why those who are faithful still suffer in this life? Hebrews 11, beginning at verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they see a homeland, and truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return." but now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. Hi there. Thanks for watching this video on the Advent Band Ministries YouTube channel. Please subscribe and click the bell icon to be alerted whenever we upload new videos. So, until we meet Him in the clouds, may God continue to bless you. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind and Hearing Impaired, Christian Record Services for the Blind, the Sabbath School Department and Hope Channel. You can also listen on the official Sabbath School 4 app and the Apple iTunes app, Sabbath School with Percy Harold. Remember, God is always faithful.